God is faithful, isn't he? He's too faithful to leave us. Today we will be speaking on prayer. Prayer. The text is from 1 Peter 3.12. I have another text from Psalm 34 verse 15. I'm going to read 34.15. It reads, The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. We are talking about prayer today. Today we will be looking at two areas. One, why does God want us to pray? And two, the effectiveness of prayer. Why does God want us to pray? And the effectiveness of prayer. What is prayer, by the way? Prayer is personal communication with God. Personal communication with God. That tells me, since it is communication, it tells me that prayer is two-way. Amen? Communication is always back and forth. Um, it tells me that when you pray God also gives a response although this is a, a broad definition of prayer I want us to know that prayer includes requests it includes confession of sin adoration and Praise and thanksgiving. So when we do any of these, it comes under the heading of prayer. Amen? Let's look at why does God want us to pray. I want you to know, first of all, that prayer is not made so that God can find out what we need. We don't pray just because God wants to know what we, what we need. Because Jesus did tell us in Matthew 6, 8, Your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. So prayer, didn't, prayer is not for God to find out what you need. God wants us to pray for a few reasons and I want to give you a couple reasons I have about three three reasons why God wants us to pray one God wants us to pray because prayer expresses our trust or our faith in God and is a means whereby our trust in him can increase so God wants us to have faith in him and that faith would be increased as you continue to pray that's one of the reasons the bible places emphasis on praying with faith which means trust or dependence on god so when we pray we pray in faith knowing that god is faithful we just sang it he's too faithful to leave us when we truly pray it means that we are convinced of God's love we are convinced of his goodness we are convinced of his greatness and his power because you know we are looking and we are calling on the creator of all things the one who created all things, the great and mighty God, 
That's the one we pray to. The first words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven. Matthew 6, 9. We know that by heart. It acknowledges our dependence on God. As a loving and a wise father. And also recognizes that he rules over all. From his heavenly throne. That's why we say our father who art in heaven. And we understand who we are talking to. The great and mighty God. Since God is our father. We shall ask in faith. So faith is important. Faith is one of the reasons. Jesus said also. Whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive if you have faith. Matthew 21, 21 and 22. Also is, it's also found in Mark eleven twenty four and James 1, 6 to 8. So God wants us to trust him, to have faith in him. That's why we pray. Reason number two. God also wants us to love him and have fellowship with him. When God created Adam, when he breathed in him the breath of life, he said, let us make man in our image and let him have dominion. God wanted fellowship with us. So prayer is a means of allowing or promoting fellowship with God. And that is the, reason, one, the second reason why God wants us to pray. So that we can love him and have fellowship with him. You see, prayer brings us into deeper fellowship with God. And he loves and delights in our fellowship with him. So, faith is one. And he wants us to have fellowship with him. And to love him. The third reason that God wants us to pray. Is that prayer allow, prayer allows us as Creatures, God's creatures, to be involved in activities that are important, eternally important. We are part of the kingdom of God. And when we pray within the kingdom, we are doing things that support the kingdom of God. And that kingdom is an eternal kingdom. Amen? Amen. So God wants us to be involved in activities of an eternal nature. Remember, he loves us. He loves us dearly. He wants the best for us. These are the three reasons. Why does God want us to pray? I want to move on to the effectiveness of prayer. I want to say this, that prayer changes the way God acts. And I want to go through some scripture verses to show you that when we pray, God changes how he acts. There are times when he wanted to do th things in the Bible. But because of prayer, he completely changed what he had in mind to do. We will come across a few of these. James 4.2 tells us, you do not have because you do not ask. Hmm. He implies that failure to ask deprives us. Of what God otherwise 
would have given to us. So, we pray, God responds. That is the communication. We pray, God responds. There are times when you have some situations and you pray, you pray, and there are times when you wonder if God is hearing. But I want you to know that He always hears our prayer. He might not move immediately because of His timing, because of His perfect timing. But we should not be discouraged. We have to pray. Continue to pray. God does not move on prayers that we do not pray. <laughs> That's interesting. If you do not pray, God cannot help. Put it that way. He doesn't move on prayers that we do not pray. In our hearts, we want to pray about a certain thing, but we, we never got around to it. God cannot help because you didn't pray. That may be surprising to some people. Listen to what Jesus said. And this is in Luke 11, 9 to 10. Ask, and it will be given you. Hello? Hmm. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. And he who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. Hmm. That's what Jesus said. And he made a clear connection between seeking things from God and receiving them. He said, go ahead, ask, seek, and knock. When you ask, God responds. Always responds. Remember, not long ago I said, God does not move on prayers we do not pray. And that is why Jesus said, ask, seek, and knock. And it's a positive thing. He answers prayer. Now, people who do not pray, it is only the mercies of God that keeps them and protects them and guides them. Because God loves us. But God wants us to pray. Because he wants to give us these things. Ask, seek, and knock. Prayer does change the way God acts. We, we see this happening many times in the Old Testament. The Lord de declares to Moses... That he would destroy the people of Israel for their sins. This is in Exodus 32, 9 and 10. But Moses besought the Lord, his God, and said, O Lord, turn from your fierce wrath and repent of this evil against your people. I really would like to read that for you. Exodus 32, from verse 9. And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Verse 10. Now, therefore, let me alone, that my wrath may wax hot against them, and that I may consume them, and I will make of thee a great nation. Verse 11. And Moses besought the Lord his God and said, Lord, why doth thy wrath wax hot against this, thy people, which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Wherefore should the Egyptians speak and say, For mischief did he bring them out to slay them in the mountains? 
and to consume them from the face of the earth. Turn from thy fierce wrath and repent of this evil against thy people. That's what Moses said. 13 says, Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, thy servants, to whom thou swearest by thine own self, And said this unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven. And all this land that I have spoken of will I give unto your seed. And they shall inherit it forever. Verse 14. And the Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do unto his people. Moses besought the Lord and he changed the way he intended to act. So God acts on our behalf. Things may not be the way you expect it to be sometimes, but when you pray, God makes changes. He makes changes. There we read, and he repented of the evil which he thought to do to his people. Now there is another passage in Second Chronicles seven fourteen. I think we know that by heart, where the Lord promised Solomon that if my people, who are called by my name, would humble themselves, seek my face, and Turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins. And heal their lands. God was saying there look. If my people would. Turn to me. I would change. The thoughts that I have towards them. I would forgive their sins. I would heal their land. That is another instance where. Prayer. Changes the way God. Acts. The prayers of God's people clearly affects how God acts. Similarly, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1, 9. We confess and He forgives. Amen? He. If we are really convinced that prayer changes the way God acts and that God does bring, bring about remarkable changes in the world in response to prayer as scripture repeatedly teaches that he does then we would pray much more than we do lots of us as Christians born again believers do not pray enough Hello? We do things. We, we on our phone a lot. I know that. Some people watch a lot of television. Some people on the social media a whole lot. When it comes to prayer, it's five minutes. And they're satisfied. But when we get into prayer, and we understand that the God that we are praying to is the omnipotent God that loves us. That, that, that wants to hear us and wants to have fellowship with us. Then we would pray some more. Amen. Knowing God. You know, if you know that you know him. You also know that he knows you better than you know him. And that is already a relationship that you can, can grow and foster. Mm -hmm. We do not pray enough. I want to... I want to look at something that is um, interesting. It has to do with praying in Jesus' name. Most of us, when we pray... 
we say our prayer or we repeat our prayer or we pray and then we say in the name of Jesus and I wonder if we really understand what it means okay I have something I want to say to you concerning that Jesus himself says Whatever you ask in my name, I will do it that the Father may be glorified in the Son. So whatever you ask in the name of Jesus, God said he would do it. That the Father will be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. That's John 14, 13 and 14. He also says that he chose his disciples so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. This is really interesting. John 15, 16. Also he says, truly, truly, I say to you, if you ask anything of the Father, he will give it to you in my name. Hitherto or up to this time, you have asked nothing in my name. And Jesus is saying, ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. John 16, 23. So asking, you will receive and you will be satisfied because your joy will be full. You know, when you hear that it would encourage us to pray pray some more it doesn't mean that we have at the end of our prayer we put in Jesus name we do it all the time right and it's really interesting but we need to know why we put it after every prayer because Jesus didn't say if you ask anything and then add the words in Jesus name after your prayer I will do it he didn't say that at all Jesus is not merely speaking about adding certain words as if these words were a kind of magic formula that you know that would give power to our prayers but we we say in Jesus name when we look in the scripture I have places here where prayer is offered in the scripture like in Matthew 6 9 13 that is the Lord's Prayer at the end of the Lord's Prayer we don't see in Jesus name do we there are prayers in Acts Acts chapter 1 Acts chapter 4 and Acts chapter 7 Acts chapter 9 even in Revelation there is nowhere after the prayer there is in Jesus name or in the name of Jesus hmm. <laughs> listen to this this statement to come in the name of someone means that another person has authorized us to come in his authority not on our own everybody got that you coming in somebody's name means that you were given the authority to come in that person's name. And um, in the Bible here, when Peter commands the lame man in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that's in Acts 3, 6, I think he was the guy by the gate beautiful or the beautiful gate. He is speaking on the authority of Jesus and not his own authority so when 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 also when Paul rebuked the unclean spirit in the name of Jesus Christ in Acts 16 18 he makes it clear that he is doing so in the authority of Jesus and not his own also Paul pronounced judgment in the name of the Lord Jesus in 1 Corinthians 5 4 on a church member who is guilty of immorality he is acting with the authority of the Lord Jesus so praying in Jesus name is therefore
prayer made on his authorization. You know, Jesus said to us, when you pray, <laughs> when if you pray in my name, all these things would happen. So he has given us authority to pray in his name. Authority to use his name. So when we are praying and we say, in the name of Jesus, we know that we are using the authority that Jesus has given us. So we can go ahead and pray in the name of Jesus. The name of a person in ancient times represented the person himself. And therefore, all of his character. So we know Christ, who he was when he walked on the earth. Okay, To have a good name, as in Proverbs 22, 1, was to have a good reputation. Thus, the name of Jesus represents all that he is, his entire character. This means that praying in Jesus' name is not only praying in his authority, but also praying in a way that is consistent with his character, that truly represents him. And reflects his manner of life. So when we use the name of Jesus. We know we cannot go wrong. Because we know who he is. The one who lived among us. Lived a sinless life. He was crucified. Buried. He rose from the dead. For our justification. So we can use that name. He did say that we should use his name. So however we do it, we must understand that when we say in Jesus' name, we are using his authority, his authorization. So go right ahead. It's not wrong to use the phrase in Jesus' name, either in the beginning or the end of your prayer. But we must understand it is not a magical formula. We must understand why we're using in the name of Jesus. Okay? Some, some people to avoid this, they, they would say something like, Father, we do not come on our own merits, but on the merit of Jesus Christ, who has invited us to come before you. So, they don't say in the name of Jesus, but they understand that they are coming on the authority of Jesus. So when we pray, go ahead and pray. God wants us to pray. Pray in the name of Jesus so that God will respond. As we have seen here, he responds every time. I want to close and I want to read a paragraph. To me, it makes a whole lot of sense. Genuine prayer is conversation or communion with a person whom we know well and who knows us. Such genuine conversation between persons who know each other never depends on the use of certain formulas or required words but is a matter of sincerity in our speech and in our hearts, a matter of right attitudes and a matter of the condition of our spirit. So let us go ahead, pray to God the Father in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let me, let me just recap some of the things we looked at today. We dealt with prayer. What is prayer? We said it's a personal communication with God. We looked at why does God want us to pray. We looked at the effectiveness of prayer and praying in Jesus' name. I pray that you would remember, put it into your heart, and call upon the name of the Lord. Pray some more. He hears us. Jesus invites us to pray. So let us do just that. Seek him some more. Pray him. Pray. He wants to build our faith. He wants to let us know that he loves us. And 
He wants us to do something eternal. That is why he has given us this opportunity to come to him in prayer. Amen. Let's bow your heads. Father, thank you again for looking again into your word. We pray, God, that what was said today would encourage every heart. It would be a tremendous blessing to your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.